I was riding my bicycle on the way back from, uh, I was at the gym. And because I used to, I actually used to instruct water aerobics at the time. And I was way back from teaching one of my classes. And I was up on an elevated bicycle path, which I'm about 15 feet off the side of the road. And what had happened is a car, in order to veer out of the way of an of a ambulance that was behind her, she had panicked, jumped the curb, and instead of hitting the brakes, she hit the accelerator and gone up on this elevated bicycle path, hit me head on. And again, that ambulance it said, who had seen me, I guess it was to, to, my, uh, to my advantage, they had stopped and they were on, on the way to another call. But they thought, okay, no, this, we gotta stop and see what's going on with this guy. Let's, let's see if he's okay. So they did and they saw that I was in pretty bad shape. And this is, this is what had initially saved my life, was A, the ambulance, B, the doctor, the head, the lead neurosurgeon being at UNMH, <clears throat> taking, me in, in, taking me in and performing the surgery. Everything was, was very, very fuzzy and I, again, I, I did not know what had happened to me. I was not cognizant of the uh, accident itself. And uh, so then once they had informed the person I was living with at the time and also my now wife in Germany who she fl flew back from Germany directly. I was shocked when I saw him. I mean, he had tubes coming out of his head everywhere. They had removed his skull, this entire part of his skull, they had removed it. They had informed them that they did not know the extent of the injuries and what effects it would have. But what they had told them was that I would more than likely be, and very possibly I could be a vegetable, mentally. And also they didn't know if I'd ever recover the use of the left side of my body because I didn't have no movement, I had no control of my legs, my arm. It was horrible. And the doctors told me, look, we don't know. If he comes out of the coma, we don't know when and we don't know what we will find. But be prepared for the worst. And <clears throat> my face was drooping as uh, you would expect from someone who's had a stroke or had some type of head trauma. And uh, he came out of the coma and the most dramatic moment was when he opened his eyes and he recognized me. And he took my hand and the first thing he said was, I love you. I was blown away. <laughs> I mean, I was in tears. I, I, I can't say enough how dramatic that moment was. Not a lot of, not a lot I could do with the left side of my body. I could walk, I could walk with an extensive limp. Um, I did not have motility or dexterity in, the, in my left side of my body, but I did have some. I was absolutely terrified and uh, <laughs> I looked him in the face, you know, and, and his eyes were like half open, but it looked like nobody was home. At that, at that point, I, I didn't have any question that, you know, there was, but it was just, okay, well, how, how, how am I going to do this? Look, you know, look in the mirror, I was, I was a wreck. You know, I had this big, huge, giant scar on my, on my head. I had to wear a helmet. He couldn't speak in a whole sentence. He could just point. Because I, at this point, I still did not have this, the skull my skull portion, which was kept in my, in my abdomen to keep it nourished instead of having it cryogenically frozen. They put it in my abdomen, so I got a scar in my abdomen that they put my skull in. And this was pretty much how they uh, uh, told me he was going to stay. They told me, you know, the connections in his brains have been interrupted for too long and there's nothing we can do about it. Through research from my wife and my friend, they had found Dr. Howe. I had never even heard of neuroacupuncture at this point. And so we had set up an appointment with uh, Dr. Howe and he had taken me in. We had discussed everything that was going on, my <clears throat> emotional issues, my physical issues. So Dr. Howe took me in and had put three needles in my head and said, raise your left arm. And my wife at the time was, you know, sitting over there thinking, yeah, right. And I was thinking, okay, yeah. <laughs> sure enough, my arm went straight up. And this is just after the first treatment, three needles, right? And I'm thinking, wow, this is something else. 
And slowly, but surely, yeah, I regained the full use of my body. I regained the full use of my, my arms and also got my emotional issues under control. It was, it was quite amazing and I thought, okay, yeah. So, I mean, okay, so those are just the first three needles. And then after that, he had put in more needles and had, you know, worked on the issues because I had uh, damages, you know, in, in my left side of my body and you know, a lot of pain. And he had hit different points throughout, the, you know, and for lying, lying still was a big issue for me because, again, mentally I was not entirely there. So, control issues, like he was totally unpredictable. He would just jump up out of the blues, rip his helmet off, and throw it against the wall. He had to work with me, with me fidgeting and not being able to lie still for extended periods of time. That's one of the things with, with acupuncture is that you know you should be able to to lie still. So he hit a lot of relaxation points as well. And so we, yeah, we're, we're we're sitting at home. And we're thinking, okay, yeah, we're definitely gonna we're, you know proceed with this because this is amazing. This is incredible. He came into Doctor Howe's office, and it was like in a fairy tale. You know, he walked in. Uh, his arm dangling down, his face drooping down, slurring his foot, you know, and completely irritable and looking around, you know, and Dr. Howe just talked to him a little, you know, very soothingly, explained him what he's going to do, and he put a couple of needles uh, in the top of his head, and he said, Indigo, lift your left arm, and I thought, yeah, right, like he can lift his left arm, what is this guy talking about, and Indigo went, boop! I was speechless. I was totally speechless. I just st stared at Indigo and I stared at Dr. Howe and I thought, is this really happening or am I dreaming? Just to work through that first part of frustration is the most difficult part of it. And I, I think one of the, the best things I can offer is as difficult as it is to try to be patient and let Dr. Howe work through with what he knows because this guy is offering something that is not generally available to most people. And most people don't even find them because this is a value that extends beyond anything that um, I've ever known. Um, I would not be here if, uh, to this extent if it wasn't I, I, for Dr. Howe. And after like two months of treatment, Indigo went to the gym and started working out. And Indigo dropped all the chemicals, all the pills, you know, and I had hope I knew I was getting my Indigo back. The guy I knew from before. How fortunate I am to have met Dr. Howe and that I still have an ongoing relationship with him. But to get me back to where I am, to ha let me have the quality of life that I have today, that's all Dr. Howe.